Watch CBSN 24-7. We've got an amazing story to share with you. I understand you have some breaking news. How does it all play out? It's quite an adventure here at CBSN. It's been a day. I'm Lana Zak. Thanks for being with us. President Trump spent part of his weekend attacking the Postal Service from his golf resort in New Jersey. The USPS has been dragged into a political fight over voting access. The service says it needs more funding to handle millions of additional mail-in ballots this November, or they may go uncounted. Weijia Zhang has the latest on the president's response. From his golf resort in New Jersey, President Trump defended his views on mail-in voting. The problem with the mail-in voting, number one, you're never going to know when the election's over. And he repeated his unsupported right. claim that mail-in voting will lead to fraud, even though he himself requested a mail-in ballot well, earlier we this can. week. But now they want to send in millions and millions of ballots. And you see what's happening. They're being lost. They're being discarded. They're finding them in piles. It's going to be a catastrophe. In Washington, D.C., protesters posted up outside the U.S. Postmaster General's home, worried their voices won't be heard on Election Day. Louis DeJoy said he overhauled the Postal Service to fix its dire financial situation. Now the internal watchdog is investigating after Democrats accused DeJoy of working with President Trump to sabotage the mail-in voting process with moves like eliminating overtime. I have uh, asked the Postmaster General a number of questions. He is not very transparent. He doesn't want to come forward with facts. CBS News has learned the Postal Service sent letters to all 50 states and D.C. warning their deadlines for accepting mail-in ballots may result in thousands of ballots not being counted. Democratic vice presidential nominee Kamala Harris posted on Twitter, we cannot let Donald Trump destroy the United States Postal Service, adding Congress must step up. Mr. Trump said he would support federal funding for mail-in voting if it's part of a coronavirus relief package that satisfies Republican priorities, too. Another union, the National Association of Letter Carriers, which represents 300,000 retired and active Postal Service workers, has endorsed the Biden-Harris ticket, saying in a statement, this pandemic is threatening the survival of the Postal Service and the Trump administration is not helping. Weijia Jang, CBS News, Bridgewater, New Jersey. For more on this, let's go ahead and bring in Weijia Jang. She's traveling with the president again in Bridgewater, New Jersey. Weijia, good to see you. So House Democrats are demanding that the leaders of the U.S. Postal Service, including the new Postmaster General, Louis DeJoy, testify at an emergency oversight hearing next week. And today, Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer said the Postal Service is being undermined by the Postmaster General and called DeJoy a, quote, political hack. How is the Trump administration responding? Well, DeJoy himself has not said whether he'd be willing to testify and whether he will, but certainly President Trump gave his full-throated support of DeJoy yesterday during his press conference when he said he was a brilliant man who he appointed to fix the outstanding problems with the Postal Service. And he said very specifically uh, that DeJoy is not doing anything to intentionally delay uh, mail deliveries, even though there certainly is, um, you know, a, a, a slowing down of mail delivery across the country. And so we have to see uh, what the move will be. Certainly um, the White House counsel and other advisors have stepped in when it comes to Congress um, asking for other uh, administration officials to testify. Um, and so it's very clear, though, what the Democrats want. They are demanding answers because of DeJoy's sweeping changes to the Postal Service, especially at this critical time, they point out just months away from the election. And of course, there is growing concern that these delays will impact uh, those ballots that will be in the mail. 
Yeah, it is worth noting the timeline on all of this, Weisha. He had just been appointed a few months ago and uh, took the reins as Postmaster right. General during the pandemic at a point in which we had already been talking at nauseum about the impacts on the, uh, the November election. And I want to follow up with you, too, about something that you asked the president yesterday, Weisha, about the Postal Service and providing additional funds to ensure mail-in ballots would be properly processed by the U.S. Postal Service. What did he have to say to you about your question and your follow-up question about really this being a bipartisan priority. Does he support additional funding? Well, the president claims that he does. What he has a problem with, he says, is universal mail-in voting. The problem is, is that uh, the money that the Democrats are pushing for to support the post office, it doesn't say it's specifically for these ballots that are automatically sent to registered voters, which is what the administration continues to air their grievances about. And this distinction is really important because the post office, as I pointed out to the president, those workers, when they're sorting ballots, they don't know whether the ballot was requested or whether it was sent automatically. The bottom line is because of the pandemic, there is going to be a crush of ballots in the mail. And to handle those, they need more money. And so I asked the president, you know, why it matters when those workers are not making the distinction and a ballot in the mail is a ballot in the mail. And it, by the way, it could be his own ballot because he has requested one uh, be sent to his address in Florida. And so he says he is open to the money, but he is against universal mail-in uh, voting. But when you're talking about these funds on Capitol Hill, when you're talking about what Democrats are asking for, they're certainly not making the distinction that they only want the money for those handful of states, really, at this point, about 10, who are automatically sending the ballots out. They just want money for the post office and post offices across the country to be able to handle all these mail-in ballots. And so he continued to blame the Democrats, he said, and he's right that the White House was willing to give $10 billion to the post office, a portion of that which would be specifically uh, going to uh, mail-in voting. But he says the problem is that talks are stalled because he has Republican priorities as well, and they have to come to a compromise. And so at this point, he's saying because that hasn't happened, that portion of money that they're asking for is not available either. But he says he's open to it. All right. We did this week, top health experts in the Trump administration issued warnings about where the country is heading in its fight against the coronavirus pandemic. They say that the death toll could reach up to 200,000 in just a matter of weeks. CDC Director Robert Redfield said that this autumn could be the, quote, worst fall for public health. What's the White House's main focus right now on this front? Well, they're really trying to stress the mitigation measures that they have been talking about now for many months. Um, wearing masks, social distancing, all the guidelines that we've been talking about, they are stressing. The problem is, is that we are many, many months into the pandemic. People have adopted their views, they've adopted their behavior, and it's hard to change that even though you have these experts from the task force out here uh, doing interviews, and that is their main priority to get the message across uh, for people to listen and uh, to stay at home if they have symptoms, to uh, get tested if they have symptoms, to uh, contact trace if they are positive, to let people know uh, who might have been exposed to it. Aside from that, the president is still really relying on therapeutics and vaccines um, in the fall to help control the virus. And we know that Dr. Deborah Birx is also going to hot spots, especially in the South, to try to um, help those local health experts get a grip on the spread. Um, but, you know, a lot of people, a lot of critics are still saying what's lacking is a comprehensive national strategy because the president made clear from the very beginning that the states and the governors have to come up with their own plans. And so as we move forward, the president uh, continues to tout numbers, saying that they're actually going down when, in fact, um, you know, we're either seeing plateaus or increases um, in states. 
And so it is a, a tough time, and we cannot lose sight of the fact that there are more cases every day and more deaths being recorded every day. Well, with all of that going on, Weijia, the next thing might be a little bit out of left field for uh, our viewers. The president yesterday said that he's considering pardoning former 